Okay, I'll call this meeting to order. And we have, uh, well, first of all, uh, we're going to conduct our select board meeting and then uh, either adjourn or recess. And at 6.30, uh, we're going to start our uh, information over the town's meeting articles and warning. Uh, and Cindy Jerome, our town moderator, will conduct that meeting. So back to the select board. Uh, we have the minutes of February 9th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of February 9th. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay, we have uh, warrants uh, 18, 18P and 18R. I'll make a motion to approve bills for payment warrants 18, 18P and 18R. I'll second that. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Uh, let's see, I'm not sure if it's 18R or just 18. The postal supplies for election, a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, but then the other uh, warrant for payment uh, covered fuel, salt, uh, allocations for uh, agencies and committees and uh, organizations that were allocated money uh, mm -hmm. through our last town meeting uh, votes. So the fire department, uh, library, uh, farmland protection, uh, social services groups, uh, all of those are getting uh, a part partial payment today. Uh, there was health insurance, tax refunds, payroll transfers, and the Wyndham Southeast School District uh, for, they are getting right now uh, $1,849,000 $356.60. That was our big item. And uh, for a total of $2,014,019.67. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Uh, let's see, are there any, do we have anyone uh, who would like to speak to something that's not already on our agenda? Any members of the public? Okay, uh, let's see, do we have the road foreman's report? Uh, I know Lee is going to be joining us later for our discussion of the uh, articles. But uh, Terry, do you have any FEMA updates for us or anything? There is no updates. I checked in with Charlotte. I mean, it's still the same status. It's up up uh, with Bill at FEMA. Uh, so there's no updates there. I did hear when that um, the engineer was on Camp Arden Road working on that study. Okay. Uh, anyone have any other road information? Really? Um, okay, uh, we'll move on then. Is there anything under correspondence for information that you'd like to discuss? There's nothing under correspondence for discussion and or action. And that brings us to new business. And uh, we had an animal bite report. And um, I followed up on that to the best I could. Uh, the phone number on the uh, report wasn't correct. Um, uh, this was unusual in, in that it involved a cat. This is the first cat bite that we have had come across our desk for a number of years. Um, and I'm not sure how we are supposed to respond to a cat bite. Um, so I, neither was the uh, Department of Health and they referred me to the state veterinarian. So I'm still trying to figure out from the state veterinarian what our protocol should be when we hear or get notice that someone's been bitten by a cat. So I'll keep you informed and let, let you know what we should do. 
Any any questions about cat bites? All right. Uh, we have a request from the school nurse, Ariane Lunge, uh, for a disbursement, a disbursement request from the Miller Fund. What would you like to do on that one? She's looking for um, a disbursement from that account to cover some coaching for a family. And the total is something over a thousand. It's $1,080 um, and it's a $90 per hour fee. Okay, anybody have any thoughts? Is, is that uh, is that a, a, a use that's uh, that's authorized by the by the by the uh, fund? Yeah. Uh, um, he uh, fund mentions that it's to be used for uh, children in need or needy yeah. children, yeah. Uh, and yeah. apparently the child qualifies for the free lunch program. And that's that's been our the criteria we use in okay. recent years. Well, okay. so I'd like to make a motion that we uh, permit the uh, spending expenditure of uh, approximately a thousand dollars for the uh, coaching of the ch 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 child uh, in that family. Okay, I'll second it. All right. Uh, any discussion? I don't recall any disbursements over the last couple of years from this fund. I don't think there has been, Zeke. I no. think I don't think this is the first one I've been on since I've been on for three yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm inclined to trust the judgment of uh, Marianne Runge on this one. Um, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Any, anybody else with some thoughts on this? Okay, um, all those in favor of this, uh, this disbursement? Uh, aye. Aye? Aye. Aye. Oh, aye. Okay, we're unanimous on it. Um, I can send her an email and let her know. Uh, we had a letter from the Energy Committee uh, suggesting that uh, with federal funds that are uh, being made available, uh, we might want to consider a village wastewater uh, system or treatment plant for uh, the West Dummerston village. And uh, what what do members think? I, I think- Well, go ahead, Rebecca. I think given the health implications that Alex um, outlined, that it's definitely worth looking into further. Um, it sounds like Alex um, kind of volunteered to kind of do some more research. I know he provided us to a, a link uh, for some more funding information. Um, but if the if the energy committee um, has has some time, I think it would be helpful for them to do a bit more research and maybe present a, a bit more detailed information to us um, and see what funding um, looks like just as like a totally cursory, cursory um, yeah, information base for us to, to have some more information. Is it my understanding that they're coming in for our next meeting already? We set them up for the agenda to discuss this with us? Uh, I think that was more, um, we were going to discuss it at our meeting. Okay. And then see whether we wanted to invite them to the next meeting or since our next meeting is uh, our organizational meeting, we might want to put it off another week. That would give us some t maybe a little more time to figure out um, the ARPA funds and you know, everyone get more familiar with the final rules on that. I think that would be a good idea. Give us time to get up. 
our heads around a lot of stuff in between and, and with being an organizational meeting next time, it, it might be better to postpone it off just a slight bit. Yeah, I agree. And I think conceptually, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good idea to, to explore the possibilities uh, of this. And, and uh, I'd be interested to, to know what, what other people think. It, there's a certain concentration of houses in West Emerson Village that makes something like this potentially possible, I'm assuming. And that perhaps doesn't exist elsewhere. Maybe, maybe it exists in Slab Hollow. Maybe it exists in center of town. I, I don't, I'm, uh, you know, around the, the office. Um, what, 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 probably perhaps Maria or knows something about that. <clears throat> Maria, any thoughts? Um, I, I think it's a good idea to wait till our second meeting in March. Um, I, I think this is that, that this is good. It, it could become extremely costly. I mean, it, you we may find we get grants or whatever to initiate it, but the long term cost could be substantial. And and I hesitate to do something like that for one section of town that's not going to benefit all residents. Um, and then then we're going to have other areas in town that are going to be asking us to do the same thing for their area. Um, and it, that, it, it, it could be substantial cost. Um, so I, I, would, I would definitely want to wait until we could sit down in person um, and, and have a discussion on it. Yeah. Okay. That seems fine with me. Um, anybody else? So, uh, so I'll send a message to uh, the Energy Committee, uh, just letting them know that we need a little more time to look through the ARPA funds and see what's available to us uh, and its uses that we can put it to and um, try to sit down with them and speak with them uh, later in March after our organizational meeting. Right, and, and, and after this is, um, I get a chance here after this meeting and stuff, I'll be sending you uh, links to get you uh, a packet together to, to start reading with the ARPA so, um, so that we can start getting everything together in a row for when we get together for all this. Yeah, yeah. just a quick reminder for me, um, when you when you access ARPA funds, is there a cost sharing that the town is responsible for? For the ARPA funds, no, no. The, well, the, we've got a. Um, let me just say it this way: I've got a, a whole bucket of information here in the last about twenty four to forty eight hours, and um, there's some changes going on with this final rule, and. Um, before I jump headlong into it, I think we really, really like Maria saying is to meet in person so that we really can get a grasp on this. But I think before we do that, I really need you to read these 44 pages of the summary to get you up to date instead of reading the 550 pages that the final rule was. So, um, so let's start you with that and then we can start having a discussion and, and um, you know, a thought thinking which way we're going to go on things. How's that? That's good. Okay. That's good. Thanks, Terry, for yeah, thank you. sending that around. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Next on our agenda, um, got to decide whether we want to continue meeting uh, with a Zoom or return to in-person meetings. What do people think? Well, the numbers are going down substantially. Um, I think this will probably, I keep saying this, but I think this will probably be the last um, state call we have. We might have one more, but I mean, things are wrapping up up there because um, there's not a whole lot of information they can give us 
um, because the numbers in decline. Um, I don't have a problem meeting in person back over the community center. Yeah, but that's like that's where I stand on it. You guys want to start um, on the next meeting, but what what's everybody else's thoughts? I don't have a problem meeting in person, actually. Um, I'm I'm good meeting in person. I might wear a mask still. Yes. See what it's like in two weeks. But. Yeah, I, I'm fine meeting in person. Yeah, I would be in for a masked in person meeting. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Uh, well, well, since we're all uh, in agreement, let's let's do that for our next meeting, which will be the organizational meeting. Great, great. Okay. Good. I'll let Gene Mominy know we're headed back her way. Yes, yes. We'll be doing this at the community center. Right. Great. Right. Okay. Is there any other new business you'd like to discuss? Well then, uh, I guess we should adjourn and then uh, we'll start our informational meeting in about uh, 15 14 minutes at 6.30. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Right. Thanks, everybody. Great. See you in a few minutes. We'll get started now, and our uh, the beginning of our meeting will include some instructions for those of you who don't do a lot of Zoom meetings. Good evening. I'm Cindy Jerome, and it's my privilege to serve as your town moderator. Welcome to Dummerston's second virtual town information meeting. This is not the town meeting we're used to. There will be no voting this evening, no making of motions or amendments. Instead, this is an opportunity for Dummerston voters to ask questions about the articles on the town meeting warning. Thank you to BCTV and our own zoning admi administrator, Roger Jasitis, who is helping as our Zoom tech guy for the evening, although BCTV is really remarkable all on their own. And this meeting is being recorded for broadcast on BCTV. Again this year, as we did last year, you'll be voting every article on a paper ballot. Many of you have already called the town office and had your ballot mailed to you. It's too late at this date to request an absentee ballot be mailed to you, but you may call the town clerk or email her and arrange to pick one up when the office is open. In-person voting will be available on the usual town meeting day next Tuesday, March 1st at the town office from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Do note that while town meeting and voting is usually in the school, and last year it was at the church, this year it's at the town office. There is one contested race for select board. David Baxendale and Mark Crakem are both running for the three-year seat. We'll start our meeting by inviting David and Mark to each spend two minutes introducing themselves and why they're running. Then we'll take a few questions for the candidates. After that, we'll go through the articles on the warning, which are on page 65 of your town report. There are two errors that have been identified in the town report, nothing too major. On page six, the top number of the second column is correct. It, on the right page here. It lists the capital fund balance at the end of, um, as of June 30th, 2021 is $195,782.86. That is correct, but the same number should appear at the bottom of the page as well. And the other correction that gets us to that correct number is the deduction under the capital fund. That total should be $239,000. $149.13. That is the total of the four capital items um, that you see listed there. And that gives us the correct figure of $195,782.86 as the balance in the capital fund as of June 30th, 2021. 
And the others on page 13, this is very minor. You'll see that both columns are headed 6-30-2020, and the second one should be 6-30-2021. Tonight's information meeting is an opportunity to ask questions. It's not an opportunity to debate, to share your views, or to lobby for votes. Sometimes there are Dummerston citizens attending who know a lot about a certain issue, such as a petitioned article. They may answer a question in a neutral manner. So I will call on you if that presents itself. You may speak once on an article. You may only speak a second time if no one else wishes to speak for the first time. And by speaking, I should say, you may ask a question about it. Let's review how our Zoom meeting works. We want you to turn off your video and mute your microphone routinely, unless you're a member of the select board or you're asking a question. Otherwise, please keep your video off and on mute. Please make sure your name is displayed correctly. You can use rename under participants or you can hover over your video square. You'll see a blue box with three white dots. And if you click on that, you'll find the rename option. Dummerson residents are welcome to ask questions. If you wish to speak, use the raise hand feature. If you hover your cursor near the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see reactions toward the right. And if you click on that, you'll see an option for raising your hand. After you've been called on, remember to lower your hand. If you are joining by phone, you can use star nine to raise or lower your hand. And you use star six if you're calling in to mute and unmute. The chat will not be monitored for questions or comments on agenda items. Instead, I will call your name or your phone number if you have not renamed yourself through BCTV to speak. When I do that, turn on your video and your, unmute your microphone. Please identify yourself and where in Dummerston you live and then ask your question and then you can mute again and stop your video. Okay, let's start with our two candidates who are um, running for the single three-year select board seat, David Baxendale and Mark Crakem. David, we'll go in alphabetical order and we'll start with you. So in two minutes, please tell us about yourself and why you're running. Thank you. Oh, good evening, fellow Demerstonians. Uh, my name is David Baxendale and uh, I'm running for the open three-year seat on the select board. I've served on the select board for the past two years and uh, I consider it an honor to have served the residents of our beautiful town and would like to continue to do so. Of some note is the fact that my tenure with the select board has all been during the difficult times of the pandemic and the vast majority of our meetings have been by necessity taken place uh, remotely. I look forward to in-person meetings again soon. With uh, my background in finance, strategic planning and consulting, I believe I am well positioned to bring these lifetime skills to bear on the work of the board. These skills are fortified by my strong belief in preserving the unique character of our town that makes living here so desirable. To me, that means preserving and enhancing the safe, open, welcoming and helping community that has served us so well. At a time in our nation when democratic principles and individual rights are under attack in so many ways and in so many places, at our local level, we can ensure that these principles are strengthened. I spend a lot of my spare time walking the roads and lanes of our town. And as I walk down these quiet and peaceful paths, I am struck each day by the tranquility of the unspoiled spaces, this treasure trove of nature. We need to preserve these treasures that belong to us all. I would be remiss if I did not mention that the, this oasis we've created and maintained here in Dummerston is due in large part to the dedication and hard work of our town employees and the selfless efforts of the many volunteers on the numerous commissions, committees, organizations, and boards that keep things running smoothly in our town. Thank you to all and thank you fellow Demerstonians. Thank you. Mark Crakem. Mark, 
Mark, we don't hear you. Will you unmute yourself, please? Mark, you unmute yourself by pressing star six. BCTV, perhaps you can help Mark Crakem unmute himself. Mark is still muted. BCTV, can you help with that? We are trying. Um, I'm sending a request for him to unmute, but pressing star six. I see, I'm reading, you can't force anyone to unmute, only ask them. Correct. So Mark, can you press star six to unmute yourself on your phone? Well, Mark, if you manage to connect with us, um, do let us know, feel free to interrupt and we'll give you some time then. Does anyone have a question specifically for David Baxendale? If so, please feel free to raise your hand now through the reaction button. If not, we'll move on to article two. Zeke, do you want to handle the articles from here, and I'll just handle questions. Sure, I think, um, uh, see, we, we actually thought you were going to take care of this one. Um, okay, I'm happy to do that. Um, I'm guessing there's no questions about article two, approving the auditor's report of the town accounts. Article three authorizes the select board to appoint a receiver of delinquent taxes. Do raise your hand electronically through Zoom, if that's something you wanna talk about. There's a question about in article four, authorizing the raising of the sum, <clears throat> excuse me, of $140,000 um, through taxes and appropriate set amount to the capital fund for future capital needs. And that's generally paired with article five, which talks about how much we wanna spend and on what in the coming fiscal year. Seek, do you want to talk about that? Yes, I think Maria is going to take. Very good. Yeah. yeah. So, so Article Four is asking the voters to authorize raising the sum of one hundred and forty thousand dollars through taxes for the capital fund for future capital needs. Um, we were able to reduce this amount considerably um, this year because the uh, the, the Dodge truck that we want to replace is less costly than the, the larger dump truck that we did last year. Um, and we, last year we did the computers and some fire department gear, which are not going to be included in this year's. Um, so thus we were able to reduce it. I don't know if there's any questions. Maria, do you want to talk about Article 5, what you want to spend from the capital fund this year? Uh, that was actually, David took that one. Okay. This is the, this is the truck, uh, actually, and uh, we have a bid on the uh, new truck uh, that uh, we need to replace. Uh, we're in negotiations to try to improve the, uh, improve the uh, offer. Um, and, uh, and, and also looking at uh, the uh, trade-in value of our existing truck. And uh, we, we're, we are um, uh, hoping that we can uh, get that settled in the quite, quite, quite soon. I see no hands raised for any of these questions. So we'll continue on <clears throat> to Article 6, general fund expenditures of a little more than half a million dollars. Who will be presenting that? Um, I, I will. So um, I'm going to, uh, usually I can look over at the assembled uh, congregation and see who has their uh, town report 
uh, open in their lab. So I'm just going to assume uh, everyone has their town report. And uh, the general fund, you open uh, your book up to uh, page 25 to find the first page of the general fund uh, expenditures of the proposal. And uh, usually in uh, at um, the gymnasium, we'll go down through the list and if there's an, I'll highlight some items. And if you have a question about one, then uh, you can uh, raise your hand. But uh, under the first section select board, there's not a whole lot uh, different. In fact, it went down a few thousand dollars. The Wyndham Solid Waste Management Assessment uh, did go down. And um, I just wanted to recognize uh, Michelle Sherrier and uh, Lester Dunkley, who have been our representatives to the Wyndham Solid Waste Management District. And Michelle for a number of years, and she's uh, a prominent member of the governing board of that organization. Um, I don't know what we would do without her. Uh, going down, uh, this was um, maybe the most unusual thing uh, in the whole book is that uh, some insurance actually went down in price. And uh, you'll see our workers' compensation uh, bill went down by more than $10,000. And that's due in part to uh, our town employees uh, working safely and uh, fewer injuries. So we're happy about that. Under administration, um, Let's see, the new, it's pretty much not too different from our last year's budget. Um, you will see at the bottom of the page, there's a Lister clerical wages. Now the Listers are elected, um, but uh, you know, sometimes they, you know, take a vacation or, you know, something comes up and uh, the other Listers sort of have to carry the full load uh, while shorthanded. And we thought um, we had uh, some unexpended funds uh, since it's an hourly uh, position. Uh, we would put some of that money towards uh, hiring an individual that might help with the clerical work of the listers. So anyone in town would like to learn more about what the listers do and uh, get involved with the town, also have a little pocket money. Um, and it would also be anyone who would be interested in becoming a lister, uh, this would be a good introduction. And then you might run an, an election further down the road. So turning to the next page, page 26. Oh, I don't have anything highlighted on this page. Uh, so not too much uh, difference. Um, you know, postage has gone up, a few things have gone up. Uh, uh, we have um, not much there, but on the next page, page 27, um, a highlight uh, in my book, and a highlight in my life is uh, animal control contract. Uh, the towns relied on volunteers uh, to serve as animal control uh, for quite a number of years. Uh, we um, put um, uh, in our budget $500 for a stipend for the last two years, hoping that we could attract someone with that. Uh, that sum of money, that princely sum, but uh, we had no takers. The sheriff uh, has been talking with towns about taking on animal control duties. And Terry um, Chapman from the select board has been attending those meetings. And we're thinking that the sheriffs uh, will have a designated person to handle this role. And we're thinking that uh, the spending $3,000 to join uh, the other towns in this project 
would be money well spent. And uh, we'll have uh, a more, if uh, hopefully, um, uh, a 24 hour uh, animal control uh, officer at your disposal. So moving down, uh, fire departments asking for a little bit more money this year. We think that's money well spent. Uh, there's a big zero under the fire department. We finished paying off, the town finished paying off the loan for the new fire station in the center of town. So that's a you know, significant savings for us. Under emergency management, um, under uh, emergency management director wages, uh, we've been running uh, zeros there for a few years, uh, but this, the select board was taking on the duties of the emergency management director and uh, the state is requiring uh, more meetings and trainings and uh, much more involvement. And so, uh, we decided to um, put in some money uh, as a stipend for uh, two people that will share the emergency management director position. And um, uh, so I think that's a, a good spending of some money. Um, and uh, let's see, our health and welfare, about the same. Uh, community center, they're not asking for any money this year. The library just going up a little for wages. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, we, uh, for town employees, we uh, are putting in a 4% uh, increase in wages this, for this next fiscal year. Uh, Farmland Protection Fund, always an interesting topic. Uh, we have funded at $5,000. And that would bring that uh, fund up to just over $41,000 in the bank. Uh, county tax is always a mystery till the last minute, but we're pegging it at $24,022. Um, CIVEDS is uh, being, we're putting $3,600 uh, into that fund. And the grand total is 500,758, of which we're going to, we have some revenue, we have some significant revenue coming in, which is going to lower the municipal taxes uh, this year compared to last year. Um, Charlotte Annis, our treasurer, has been serving as an interim uh, delinquent tax collector and working with. Uh, individuals throughout town uh, on coming up with payment plans to become more current. And she uh, has done a great job doing that. And we also have some savings uh, having finished the payments for the uh, fire department building. So we have a surplus of just over 90,000 that we're applying towards this bill. So. Uh, our municipal tax rate will be uh, lower than last year. So if there are any questions, Cindy, I'll, I or other members of the board will be ready to answer them. Thank you, Zeke. I do not see any questions. I don't see any raised hands. So I'm going to divert from the agenda and see if we can go back to Mark Krakum. Mark, are you able to unmute yourself? Apparently not. Okay, we will move on then to article seven, the highway fund expenditures. Who will cover that? Uh, I will. Thank you, Zeke. Okay, uh, let's see. We're going to ask, uh, we have a total of $583,955, of which 
$5,128 shall be raised by taxes and $145,827 by non-tax revenues. So if you will turn, I think it's page 24, just the page just before the uh, general fund. Um, page 22, Zeke. Oh, 22. Yes, okay, sorry. It's on page 24. All right, gee whiz, my book doesn't have a uh, page 23 or 24. I wonder what I'm missing. Um, anyway, um, so going down the uh, proposed budget, uh, you'll see there's an increase in wages. Um, we have uh, the gravel pit, payment for the new gravel pit that we share with Putney over on Route 5, uh, going down a little each year it should. Uh, Saving is about the same. Most salt is going up a little and uh, diesel fuel uh, going up. We budgeted um, an extra 6,000 over last year for that. Uh, other than that, uh, not much new or uh, much different than previous budgets. I wonder if Lee Chamberlain is around. Our, our town road foreman, and he could join. In. Lee, you you out there in Zoom land? Yes, yes, I am. I don't know how to raise my hand. I just unmuted myself. Okay. Uh, anything? Any questions for Lee? Or Lee, if you want to say a little bit about what's going on in your department, what you're planning on doing. Right, the uh, culverts are the big thing that um, doubled, and that's just just not more culverts. It's just um, the price of them have increased a lot. Um, but that's about it. Okay. Any questions from anyone else? Yes, I see a hand from Jessica Nelson and Jared Clark. Please unmute yourself and turn on your video. Hi, uh, yeah, we're at 434 Schoolhouse. I just wanted to ask about the um, washout on East West. I know FEMA has been, uh, or well on Schoolhouse, along East West into Schoolhouse. I know FEMA was looking at it and it was uh, being considered. Um, additionally, that I don't know if there's any uh, issues or um, inspection of the east-west bridge at the junction of schoolhouse. Um, I know it's listed in the report as in good condition. Are there any long-term concerns with the bridge at following the washout? I guess that's it. <clears throat> Terry, Terry Chap might want to join in on this discussion. Terry? Yes, I, I... I think we could answer in terms of the bridge, in terms of the fallout, but in terms of um, the damage to Salmon Brook, where we're at is um, Lee and Charlotte and I met with uh, the FEMA representative. Um, they took all the information um, regarding Salmon Brook and it has gone into, um, uh, they've taken up the chain. And we have not, at least I have not heard, Lee can, unless he got some information the last couple of days, um, there has been no determination yet whether FEMA will cover that. We are still waiting on that. That is the information I have also. And as far as the bridge, um, there was no like structural um, integrity or whatever, it's it's still um, in good shape. Okay, thank you, Terry and Lee. Any other questions on the article regarding the highway fund? Seeing none, we'll move on to article eight. 
Shall the voters authorize raising the sum of $25,000 through taxes and appropriate set amount to the Highway Structures Fund for future structures projects? Would anyone on the select board or Lee like to speak to this? Explain what future structures projects would be. Cindy, this is Maria, so I'm presenting it. Uh, but if there's if there are future projects, that would be up to that Lee could chime in on that one. Um, so this is where we appropriated twenty five thousand dollars for future structures projects. This helps with with our when we have to match a grant or put in a certain percentage um, for future projects. And uh, if there are future projects, Lee might be able to mention that one. So we are we are taking and um, putting um, trying to put five thousand dollars in a year into that fund to replace the covered bridge decking in the future. Um, so that's where some of the money goes. Um, with the FEMA event, our schedule for different projects have got switched around a little bit. Um, right now we're trying to get Camp Arden Road um, structure taken care of through FEMA. And then hopefully next year, be able to do Leonard Road structure. Okay, any other questions? All right, we will move on. And, I, and just a reminder for those of you joining us by phone, you can mute yourself by pressing star six and unmute yourself the same way. You can raise your hand by pressing star nine and then lower your hand the same way. Article nine, who's speaking to that? Highway blasting and ledge crushing reserve fund. Sorry, yeah. needed to unmute myself. <laughs> okay, article nine is shall the voters authorize raising the sum of the $19,096 to taxes an appropriate set amount to the highway blasting ledging, ledge crushing fund reserve. This uh, fund was set up three years ago. This is to do with the um, purchase of the gravel pit with Putney. And the agreement was that Putney and Dummerston would put so much aside every year. And I think it goes up 3% a year, if I'm correct, towards uh, the blasting that's gonna need to be taken to take place. And if I'm correct, and Lee could probably give you a better idea, but I think we're about two years out or so when we'll have to go in and start blasting. Okay. Any questions on this article? Seeing none, we'll move on to Article 10. Shall the voters grant tax exempt status to the Evening Star Grange for a period of one year? Is Paul Normando, I see you have a question. Go ahead and unmute and turn on your video. Hi, thanks, Cindy. Sure. Um, I, I was a little late in raising my hand, uh, but this refers, or refers to the blasting fund. Uh, do we have a balance in that fund at this point? Because I see we keep We've got several years of additions there, but I can't find anywhere where we have a, a balance in it. Uh, so I was curious what it is if the last thing is coming up in the next couple of years. Thank you. Charlotte, is that a question you can answer or is there someone else? I think I did it. Okay. Uh, so we put we put eighteen thousand into it last year. That was the first year, and we're putting eighteen five forty this year. So um, we'll have what thirty six five forty right now is our balance. Will Will the town report 
in future years indicate if any of these funds have balances in them and have expenditures out of them? You know, where you have a beginning balance, an addition to the fund, and then a removal for the fund for a particular item. It would it would seem uh, to be informative if that would occur in the future. Thank sure. You. We can do a balance sheet for it. Thank you. Good idea. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Paul. Paul, if you want to lower your hand, thank you. And I see Ruth, you had your hand up. Ruth Hoffman, do you have a question? Uh, no, I was just going to comment that I, as town auditor, I just made a note to myself that for next year, we needed to include uh, a funds total, not just funds revenue. So I already made a note starting on next year's. Thank you, Ruth. Our auditors are on top of this. Okay, back to Article 10 regarding tax exempt status for the Evening Star Grange. Did anyone want to speak to this? Rebecca, you'll need to unmute yourself. Thank you for the reminder. Um, uh, I'm going to speak to both uh, Article 10 and Article 11, um, since they are uh, essentially the same, the same question. Um, the Evening Star Grange, as well as uh, the Green Mountain Camp, um, are, uh, they meet the requirements for Title 32, Section 3840, and are asking for tax-exempt status uh, for a one-year period. Are there any questions regarding either of those articles? I see none. So we'll move on to, it's not given an article number, it's a non-binding advisory question regarding the fair and impartial policing policy. Um, if anyone has any questions, any information they would like about this, I assume since it's a petitioned article, or I don't know, is it a petitioned article or did the select board, it is petitioned, Zeke, is that right? Yes, it's a petitioned article. Okay, so the select board isn't going to speak to this. Um, in town meeting, we would normally have someone speak to it and in favor of it, because this is an information meeting, we're not looking for opinions. We're looking for requests for information and citizens who may be well informed on this issue who can neutrally answer those questions. I know we do have a couple of people who planned on being with us this evening, Dummerson residents, who could speak to it if someone has a question. A reminder, if you want to ask a question, you can hover your cursor toward the bottom of your Zoom screen. And on the far right, you'll see a button called reactions. If you click on that, you'll see right above um, a raised hand and the words raise hand. And if you click that, I'll be able to see that you have a question. If you are calling in on the phone, you can press star nine and your hand will be raised. This could turn out to be a really short meeting. Um, Cindy, has Mark Crakem joined us yet? I believe that Mark um, dropped off, came back on, but again, wasn't oh. able to unmute, but I'm told that he, it looks like he's unmuted now. So Mark, would you like to take your two minutes to tell us about yourself and why you're running? Uh, Madam moder moderator, I'll uh, wait to the end. I don't want to hold up the uh, informational meeting. Is that okay? No, I think you should go ahead now. There are no questions on the table, and we've gotten through the end of our list of articles. So go ahead. Thank you, Madam moderator, for this presentation. I'll be short and sweet. You've seen my history and the views of Dummerston. And the only other thing I have to say is I found out the third year seat was vacant, decided to step up to the plate and take my turn as any community minded person 
should do to help out. Uh, I'm going for my turn at the select board for a new and fresh approach. I thank all that served before me for stepping up to the plate and serving their community for the time that they have. Um, I will listen to advice of present and past select board members so they can seek me out and speak their mind. Uh, I'm a statesman, not a politician. A statesman are for the people. And I thank you for your vote of confidence and time. So stay healthy and safe. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mark. Mark, why don't you stay unmuted? And David, if you want to unmute yourself, we're looking for questions for the candidates. Both David Baxendale and Mark Crakem are running for this three-year seat. Does anyone have a question for either one or both? Have a good night. Okay, I see no hands raised. We've gotten through our agenda without any questions. We've reached the conclusion of our meeting already. Um, I wanna thank you all for your participation. Um, please remember to vote. And I dearly hope that we will all be together next year at this time for a real town meeting with pie and library <laughs> books to adopt yeah. and all those other good things. Absolutely. So thanks everyone. Oh, hold on. I see a question. Michelle Green has a hand raised. Michelle, would you like to unmute yourself and turn on your video? Thank you. I, I can. Um, I just wanted to sneak in at the end. Michelle Green on uh, Green Mountain Camp Road, and I uh, am a school board director um, for Dumberston. And just wanted to let everyone know that tomorrow night is the public information meeting that the school district will be offering on our our vote as well on the school budget. And those questions can be answered. Any questions can be answered there. Thank you, Michelle. Anyone else? All right, take care, stay safe, and we hope to see you next year.